Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another action figure review video. This is the 112 scale Palm Hero Japan Samurai series Takeda Shingen. The companies like Palm Hero, they're also a DID co. I, you know, these companies have so many names all the time. I Anyway, <laughs> I bought this because uh, as many of you know, who follow my channel, I write and draw graphic novels and comic books and my current graphic novel that I'm working on has the samurai in it and I just am getting to the part where he's like armored out and so I wanted to have something for reference for drawing him so I picked up one of these guys I've been looking at these for a really long time I kept putting it off because I didn't really have a spot in the display or a reason to get one other than just because it was cool and they're kind of you know they're spendy and I was like ah there's always something else I wanted instead of it but I finally got one of these and I started to open it and I was like I gotta do a video on this this is cool and I never talk about the boxes because like I generally don't care but when I started to open this one like it has this magnetized cover and then this works as a background so you can set it up like a you know a trifold thing like that with your figure in front of it I have one of their other figures. They did a James Bond from No Time to Die. So I'm familiar with their stuff. It runs a little bit small. That's another reason I didn't get it initially. They're more import like SH figure art size and I work more in the Mezco scale. But anyway, I so I started to open this and I was like, okay, I forgot they do this cool thing. That's pretty dope. And then I took off this like instruction layer and it had this and I was like, all right, <laughs> I gotta do a video on this cause this is fire. So. First layer, we have his like outer kimono robe. I don't, I don't know the terminology for all this stuff, so forgive me. So that's shot of everything it comes with. Yeah, it's got like the armor box, uh, armature thing to put it on, sword display, all that stuff. So I don't know if they come without clothes on. That's kind of a little more daunting than I typically want. But yeah, right out of the, right out of the box, like this is a really nice fabric. I think it scales pretty well. Like the weave isn't too big. You have this really beautiful embroidery stuff going on here. Oh, okay. So he's he's fitted up already. Look at this. That's cool. And um, they give you a nice ribbon so you can pull it out. Oh my god, there's even more stuff underneath. Okay. This is <laughs> this is cool. I've been researching samurai armor a lot for this project. You know, I was already pretty familiar with it because I've been interested in samurai like my whole life pretty much. And uh, this is really cool to see like just how detailed this stuff is. We're going to get all this stuff out and take a look at him in a minute. But I want to look at these things in detail. So you have the mask. This actually has like little strings like it's like it ties on his face. Detail in that's really nice too. The tiny little kind of crest in there cut out it's not as clean on this side but i mean that's impressive that's so small we're talking like less than a millimeter of space there for the ear holes i guess they probably are i, I don't know if this was a, a real guy or if it's just kind of like they gave a name to this character i assume you know i've i've studied a decent amount of the history of this stuff but i don't know everything and everyone so this very well could be a real guy wow this has like real like is i think this might be wool wool Wool. <laughs> I don't say that word a lot. It sounds weird coming out of my mouth. Uh, you know, from like a sheep. Look at the details in that. That little face right there. And like, these are like crab legs or something. Tiny little imagery. That's so cool. <laughs> Who is she? This is cool. I've had to research these. So seeing like a little 3D approximation of one is pretty rad. We've got, okay, a trigger finger. And then maybe this is for like holding his fan or something. And then we have his armor stand. And this actually has a cutout image on there too. That's pretty cool. I don't know what this is a tassel for, or it's like, oh, it's a, it's a ponytail and an extra tassel. And then underneath this layer, I think this is probably his banner stand. I think you click this into place like that. It doesn't actually come with further instructions aside from like heat up the head before you start taking this stuff apart. But yeah, I think I think his banner, ooh, that's a tiny little, tiny little guy. This feels like it's, it's actually die cast, I think. So this maybe goes in here, feels a bit tenuous. Yeah, I think that goes in there and then you stick this through here and then his banner stands up. And this is a nice fabric as well. It's all tied together, that's cool. A lot of companies would just make this like a molded piece. 
This is actually like tied little nylon string. That's pretty dope. A couple more hands, just relaxed hands. You know, I'm kind of going in a weird order here. Usually like I set it all up and everything, but I was kind of digging the vibe of just you guys coming along this little journey with me. So that's how we're doing it. We have his fan and again, that's an actual wrapped nylon cord instead of being molded plastic. That's pretty fire. This little stool. That's sick. I love a little prop like this, you know, like with actual fabric. That's so cool. And then we've got another pair of hands. It's maybe for holding his banner. The part I'm most excited for, the sword. That's die cast. It's very thin. Like you can barely see it when I turn it that way. It's a little bent hesitant to mess with it too much. Oh, now I done did it. It's almost like aluminum with how flimsy it is, which is not great. I have that, the Noda, I can't remember the character's name, this samurai, and he's got a metal sword. And this is like pretty thick compared to this one. They're almost exactly the same size lengthwise and the handle and everything, but this one is much more substantial. So the first major ding against this figure, this uh, Palm Hero one is the sword is not great, which is unfortunate because it's my favorite part. Oh, you know what? I bet this, um, I bet this is to tie his sword to his waist. It's got these little loops right here. Put this away. Oh, I'm gonna do it the cool way. All right, here he is in the full setup and this looks rad. What a cool figure. So the details are just incredible on this thing. We'll take a closer look in a sec here. I did look him up. He was a real person. Uh, he lived in the mid 1500s and he was the daimyo of the Kai province of Japan. And they he was known as the Tiger of Kai, which explains the tiger rug that comes with him. Apparently a warlord of some renowned. And uh, yeah, so it's cool, you know, and that, there's a, a photo of a modern reproduction of his armor and it looks a lot like this. So they really were trying to keep this like pretty accurate. And I think that's so cool that there is a figure line that does this kind of stuff. Uh, they DID Corp, I think Palm Hero might specifically be their samurai line, I'm not sure, but I know that they do a lot of like World War II stuff. The flag staff was very difficult. You can see it's not totally inside the the other piece of it because the paint uh, around that little peg is making it too thick to fit into the hole so i got it in there about as good as i could but um that'll do for now i don't know if i'm how i'm going to display this guy or where yet he's going to live on my desk for the next few months as i finish drawing this book <laughs> but yeah let's let's uh take a bit of a closer look here yeah look at those details this is so cool i'm really just in awe of this thing I love all the stuff he comes with. These are really cool accessories, you know? Like, this isn't a figure of a character who's gonna have a lot of stuff that's like effects and things like that, but to have like a, you know, pretty historically accurate setup is pretty cool. I did put this stuff in baggies. Well, that this one was already in a baggie, but the hands I put in a baggie because, man, the, that's one issue I have with this, the way they packed it. There were three sets of hands that were all in different spots in the box, and so they, you know, I kind of wanted to fall out as I was moving them around and whatnot. So if you get one of these, I would definitely suggest putting that stuff in a baggie. And actually it comes with that chest. So you can put all the extra stuff in there. Look at the embroidery. Like this is all laced up on the inside of his arms there. I don't know anatomically what all this stuff is called with respect to the armor. Uh, you know, each, each piece has its own name. These sleeves go on and they go on either side and then they tie across the body. And I don't know that this set is doing that under the armor, but that's you know traditionally how those were done. They have chain mail that connects all these little armor plates that are interwoven. And you can see here, they've approximated the chain mail with this kind of mesh material, like this kind of like, almost like basketball short netting. <laughs> it's so cool. The, the sheen to that trim around the edge of it there. Samurai armor was really incredible. Like you maintain so much range of motion, but it was designed to protect you super well. Like, like these shoulder pieces were to shield you from arrow fire generally. And the way that they match up with the helmet was kind of designed to create this like phalanx that you just can't 
break through, right? And then the way that the neck is protected by this piece, yeah, so cool. Obviously there are some vulnerable spots, you know, on the arms and whatnot, but for the most part, I mean, they really tried to cover every part of the wearer in a way that like all these different panels move together and they still maintain a pretty good range of motion. Instead of just wearing like a suit of metal, like a, like a medieval, you know, European knight. That's like such a corny setup if you think about it. <laughs> like so much more creativity and, and ingenuity with this sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I've had to study this kind of stuff extensively lately for my book and like all of the pieces are here. Like these, these shin pieces that wrap around this kind of sleeve that goes up and covers the knee like that. These under pieces that tie around the leg. And then you have the chest armor that has these individual flaps that hang from it, from cords around the waist to maintain flexibility. And then they would tie it with these belt sash things. Again, forgive my ignorance for not knowing all the technical, you know, Japanese terms for all these pieces, but really dope. All right, taking a look at articulation. I don't usually spend too much time on this uh, just because we all know how action figures work and they're all pretty close to one another. These little import bodies do have like a kind of a, not even a butterfly swivel, but like it's literally on like a hinge that comes up this way and you know, like the arm sits down on it. So you get a pretty good like butterfly range of motion in these. This actually bends pretty well. I thought it might be a little bit more hindered because of the sleeves, but he gets a pretty good range of motion there. Uh, the hands are, are like a soft plastic, which is nice. So they can be, you know, you can move the fingers to make him grip something. Uh, yeah, the arms go up to there. I bet if you kind of mess with it, you get a little more height out of it. And you can certainly do like an overhead thing if you want with his sword. They rotate pretty far back. You know, these, like I said, these little bodies are super articulate. Certainly at the waist, he's gonna be hindered quite a bit. So you have a little bit of twist, not, I mean, it's pretty negligible. Um, and he bends over about that far. So he can hit a bow, that's pretty good. Uh, backward, not much. Maybe you out like that but again you know a guy in a suit of armor you won't expect the same as somebody just in street clothes all right helmet off for the head articulation you can look back a bit not super far he's got this rubber neck underneath so it's not really moving with a peg much again tempered expectations you can look down pretty far obviously some tilt and he can rotate all the way around. Looks like legs can come up to about there. So not not great in that department. Back, you can't go too far either. You can bend the knee almost all the way. Quite a bit of range there. He's got thigh swivel. The ankle is on a ball peg. Hinges back pretty far. Up doesn't really do much. And then not a lot of tilt. Maybe if you twist it and then tilt it and then twist it yeah so you got to kind of mess with it a little bit but yeah i mean you know like i said decent articulation in line with what you'd expect a figure with all these layers to have i think you can still get him in some pretty cool samurai poses if you want you know let's see if he can two-hand a sword here yeah if his other hand was on there you could absolutely that plugged in there and have him hold it so yeah, kind of a quick and dirty articulation rundown. All right, a couple of size comparisons. On the left, we have the Nota Toys uh, Nura, I believe is the name of the, the samurai character. And on the right is the V Toys 6 inch plus Shadow Ninja. Now that one runs a bit small, so it actually scales pretty perfectly with the Palm Hero figure. It's a little bit big in terms of just like the proportions of the head and, and hands and everything but you could easily have these two facing off if you wanted to in a display or in some photos, and I think it would look perfect. Um, the Nota figure is a little bit bigger because those are more toward Mezco scale, but uh, again, that one, you know, his head is much bigger, I mean, you can see, but I think it still kind of works. And here he is next to a Mezco 112 Collective John Stewart Green Lantern and the McFarlane Batman Forever Sonar Suit Batman. So you can see next to a seven inch scale figure and a tall one at that, he looks pretty small. 
Uh, he's not scaling too badly next to that Mezco. I mean, the head size is quite a bit different. Maybe the head's a little small to accommodate the big samurai helmet, but I don't think so. I think that's just the size of the heads on those figures. But yeah, that gives you an idea of uh, how he scales next to a few different kinds of figures. So here's our guy, Lord Takeda, on the shelf. I love the pop of color. I talk about this a lot on the channel, but there's so much figure-wise that's just black, gray, dark colors. So it's nice to have this like beautiful pops of orange in there. And this display actually is kind of a more colorful one. I don't show this shelf much. This is kind of a catch-all shelf at the moment. Um, you know, I got my, my Mezco X-Men there. That's a custom James Bond that I made that I replaced with the Muff Toys figure in my main Bond display. And then that's the DID Palm Hero, whatever brand one that I mentioned earlier. That's one I want to take the outfit from, put it on this body with that head. Uh, because like I spent a lot of time on that. Uh, and I think it's just a more accurate head sculpt than that guy has there. So yeah, anyway, uh, but obviously, you know, I can power Ranger next to James Bond. Like eventually when the Mezco ones come out, I'm going to have a whole setup for them as well. But yeah, so it's kind of a catch all at the moment. And so I have them down here with some of my other sort of historical, you know, like a, a cowboy Western figure that I made there. And you know, this ninja in this, uh, bamboo strike. Dio by Kraken Customs, by the way, check them out on Instagram. Uh, the only Dio that's handmade in my collection that I didn't make myself. That's where his setup is going to be, but as I mentioned, I'm going to have the figure on my desk with me a lot for photo reference and stuff like that. But yeah, if you're into Samurai and you don't have one on the shelf, I would recommend this guy. I got it from Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, there, I think he's available in a few other places, but Big Bad was the only place that seemed to like reliably have him in stock. I would like to get more of these and some different armor. I think that'd be sick, but for now, this guy is going to fly solo. So thank you for joining me for this kind of impromptu loose uh, figure review. Typically, I stick to a little bit more of like a format, but this was kind of just a fun thing that I wasn't planning on. And you know, I like it. I like when a video feels like I'm in the room with the person. So I was kind of hoping to capture that vibe with this one. If you like this kind of stuff, hit subscribe. Join me as I make cool customs and vehicles to go with the figures and dioramas and, you know, review random stuff I get. Other than that, if you'd stay tuned for the last little stretch here, I'm going to talk about my comic books that I have available. So that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I invite you to click the like button and hit subscribe and join me as I make cool stuff. I, you know, custom figures, dioramas, uh, vehicles to go with the figures. I review new stuff that I get on the channel. If you're looking for other ways to support this, I've got t-shirts available. My head on swivel shirt, as well as several other action figure and comic book themed shirts are available in my Redbubble shop. If you've never used Redbubble, it's pretty great. You pick the color shirt, the style, and the design you want, and they ship it right to you. Now, if you're not a t-shirt person, but you like comics, I've got several comics and graphic novels available, namely my books, High Crimes, Count, and Retroactive. High Crimes is kind of Breaking Bad meets Cliffhanger. Retroactive is like James Bond meets Groundhog Day, and Count is my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. Think kind of a, you know, John Wick meets Batman meets Zorro. It's a cool story with swashbuckling action and sword fights and vehicle chases, and it's about redemption, revenge, and revolution. So those are all available at your local comic shop, bookstore, or at the links in the description below. So to everyone who's picked up a shirt already or one of my books, thank you so much. It means the absolute world to me. I, I really, really appreciate it. It really helps make it so that I can do this kind of stuff and bring you more videos. Couldn't ask for anything more, so thank you. So that is gonna do it for this one. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.